another edition here of We Talk Fantasy, the Gonzalo Media Fantasy Football Podcast. It is playoff time. The regular season has wrapped up. Before we get to some playoff action, the true way how you can win your championship. You've been watching and listening to this podcast for months, and here we are. Before we get to all that great stuff we're going to offer you, we got to talk about Lily and David Fine Jewelers. It is the holiday season. Just about moments ago, how about that? Moments ago before we hit record here, I saw Alyssa up. At Route 50, the shops of Wilton, their store, maybe in the past holiday seasons, you've been going somewhere else. Stop into their new locations, the shops of Wilton, where Lily and David Fine Jewelers can be found. Family owned and operated business. There I was looking across the selection of jewelry. I had my eye on something. I thought, oh, maybe that's the push gift. Maybe that's the Christmas gift. And then I realized I should listen to the experts. They will help you find exactly what she's looking for. Shout out to Tammy. Shout out to Alyssa, David, everybody over there. They will help you find what you're looking for this holiday season. The fiance, the wife, or soon to be fiance and wife, buy that engagement ring at the spot where I bought it and have that same story for years to come. A lot of S's right there. Lily and David Fine Jewelers, you stop in, tell me you heard about Gaza's story. Tell me you heard about from We Talk Fantasy. Tell me you heard about from Chet Davis. Everybody over at Lily and David Fine Jewelers. All right, Chet, I think before we dive into the playoffs and rosters and matchups that we like, I think we got to do a little award season. Now that the regular season is wrapped, the award season. So let's start off with this question. Who is the MVP of fantasy football in 2022? By the way, if you're looking for Ray Ray, Ray Ray is a busy man this holiday season. He is a very, very busy man. So that's where he is right now. His middle name is Santa Claus, if you didn't know that. It's <laughs> Kyle Santa Claus Ray. So he's that's working right. on making sure everybody gets their presents this holiday season. Uh, yeah, who do you like as MVP besides Ray Ray? Yes. This is a great question. So I think, I think there are multiple viable answers. I'm pretty sure... We were unanimous. Actually, maybe we weren't unanimous last year. I think that you guys both went with Mr. Cooper Cup. Or no, Jonathan Taylor. I think I, think I was you and I, Cup. yes. You guys were Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. Um, so maybe that was a two-headed race last year. I think there are some good candidates this year. Um, I'm leaning towards Justin Jefferson. Um, I think from week one, uh, there was like a tiny little gap where he kind of was more quiet than normal. Um, but aside from that, I means wide receiver number one, uh, half point PPR is averaging 19 points, coming off a record setting performance in the final week of the regular season. So that's what you're looking at. Like when I'm picking an MVP for the regular season, I need the whole body of work. I don't want the guy that, you know, scored 30 points in week one or week two. No, I want the guy that had a consistent schedule, a consistent season. I mean, the guy already has 1,500 receiving yards, guys. We're not even done with the year yet. 1,500. Like, that, that's in 13 games. 1,500 yards. Imagine if his touchdown total was where it should be. For a guy with 99 re- receptions, Justin Jefferson should easily have double-digit receiving touchdowns. And he doesn't, and he's still wide receiver one. Uh, you look at in the, in the last month or so, guys. Uh, 28 points last week, 25 points in week 12, 30 points in week 10. I mean, the guy had huge performances throughout the season. Um, if you drafted him in the first round and you know, you could have made an argument this year that he was deserving of the number one pick, depending on your drafting strategy. So if you pulled that trigger in the top five, top four, top three, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're dancing in the playoffs right now. This is a borderline Justin Jefferson stand podcast because if you go back in history and you can see that on our visual side, the fist pump from Chet because long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away, Chet had said Justin Jefferson has potential not just to be the rookie of the year, but to put up historic numbers as their rookie wide receiver for dynasty players, for keeper players. If you listen to that advice years ago, you have benefited that franchise. That's exactly right. You are welcome. Uh, and I think the other thing we should add about Justin Jefferson for more perspective here is that if we go back to August and July, the debate was who is the top receiver coming off the board? It was one of the f- more fun debates we had of yep. Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup, and Justin Jefferson. Now, and Jamar, Chase. Adam, and Jamar Chase as well. Thank yep. you. That's right. Jamar Chase as well. Yep. Uh, Chase got hurt, missed a few games. Devontae Adams has been great. Yep. And Cooper Cup got hurt. And Cooper Cup probably could come back, but the Rams stink. So Justin Jefferson took off away with that. There's another name that should be considered for MVP, 
Yep. But I feel like you and I are holding that for another award. So I'm going to back off on who that might be. And maybe that's a nice oh. little tease. Jefferson's a really good pick. But if you followed this podcast, you know that Chet Davis is a Justin Jefferson fan. You know who I've stand for on this is the MVP. And that is Travis Kelsey. Travis Ooh. Kelsey for non-PPR players ranks anywhere between 8 and 11 in overall scoring at the end of the regular season. Depending on if you're in a bonus league or not, you're ranking him anywhere between 8 and 11. Now that's impressive. Running back, wide receiver, tight end. For a tight end to finish that high is really good. What's more impressive is this. Look at tight end two. There are some leagues where he has doubled, doubled tight end number two. Now, again, depending on your scoring, it could be Taysom Hill. It could be an injured Mark Andrews. The difference between Travis Kelsey and the number two tight end is historic in its own right. One more time for perspective. Let's say Josh Allen scored a 400 yard uh 400 point season which is possible depending on what your scoring is 800 points a quarterback but i don't even want to do the numbers we're talking about like eight thousand yards 80 touchdowns <laughs> like, if you even tried to do that for another position what three thousand yards of, it's stupid but travis kelsey has had that type of season the difference between him and everybody else is so far and we can already see in 2023 our summer shows of who should be the number one pick Don't be shocked if in July or August of 2023, Chet and I are battling between Justin Jefferson and Travis Kelsey for the number one slot. Oh, and and I I feel uh, like I need to issue some sort of apology because I was in the Mark Andrews is the new tight end one camp. Yes, he he earned that title last year. I thought he had surpassed and he was going to maintain that position. And I, I thought I had good reasoning. Like Travis Kelsey is getting older. You know, he's not a young buck anymore. Uh, Tyreek Hill, no longer there to take the top off of defenses. Like you would think that a <clears throat> mid thirties tight end, I believe he's what? 33, 34. Yep. Uh, let's just do a little quick look. I love Google. Don't you? <laughs> uh, Travis Kelsey, Kelsey is 33 years old right now. Um, clearly, clearly the number one weapon for Patrick Mahomes. That's not even close how far above he is for everybody else that Patrick Mahomes throw the ball. And defenses can't stop him. Like, he's that good. When when you see Travis Kelsey put the perennial all-pro Jalen Ramsey in a blender, that's different, bro. Like, that's that's a tight end that I don't know if we've seen before. Like, dude, don't get me wrong. Robert Gronk- Rob Gronkowski is one of the best tight ends we've ever seen. And Antonio Gates was amazing. Tony Gonzalez was great. Uh, Sharp. You know, might be in that kind of Travis Kelsey kit in terms of the athleticism that to see just a tight end burning cornerbacks, like what? Not out jumping or bullying, no, out running cornerbacks. The guy's just completely special. Uh, He's different, and uh, yeah, he cemented himself again as just the guy at the tight end position. Because, like you said, he's doubling up tight end ones. You know what I mean? Like yes, out there starting. I don't know, Dalton Schultz or even George Kittle. He's doubling you up. Like, that is just, that's elite, man. I don't want to minimize the Hall of Famers at the tight end and wide receiver position, but I feel like Justin Jefferson and Travis Kelsey do something similar. A lot of guys you just listed there, uh, Gonzalez and Gates and Gronk, they have like a specialty. Like, if you're going for the red zone and Randy Moss and, and Calvin Johnson, like, you get it. Like, okay, red zone target. Okay, open field target. Imagine Gronk gets in the open space. Someone's going to try to tackle him. The difference between Kelsey and Jefferson is I feel like, maybe this is the fantasy bias in us, they should get the ball every play. Like, all right, it's a slant route, give it to Jefferson. Oh, it's a third and six, give it to Kelsey. Every single play, they can do something, which is such a compliment to both of their games, both Jefferson and Kelsey. And it is, like you said, the evolution, revolution of football and the passing game and everything else. So we love that stuff as fantasy football owners. We go different on our MVP picks. Maybe we're the same here on the sleeper. Maybe I'm totally off. Sleeper that helped everybody win this season. Who is your pick? This one is also difficult because it depends on on how you want to define sleeper. You know, you're talking about the guy that was just buried in in, in the draft. You know, a guy who was a, a hundred and above pick. Or do you want to go for the guy that was just 
just completely surpass expectations. And I'm going to go with the latter on this one because this guy easily could have made a case uh, for MVP. I almost feel like we should have added an award for like, you know, MVP and offensive player of the year, even though it's the freaking same thing. Most um, valuable versus most outstanding. You know, the old final go. four versus there end of season awards. Yep. Do you know where I'm going with this? I believe you're going to say Josh Jacobs. I'm going to say Josh Jacobs. And so again, it's it's not that crazy like you drafted him in the 10th round. Um, but basically, you know, everyone has their different preseason draft rankings and draft boards. Right now, I'm looking at ESPN just for reference of, of where Josh Jacobs was. I mean, he was picked as running back 22. Running back 22. And he currently, uh, in at least half point PPR, is running back number one. Austin Eckler, I believe, has his number in PPR because Austin Eckler is a cheat code when it comes to receptions. Um, but just like my criteria for MVP, there weren't a lot of down weeks for Josh Jacobs. Like you look at his game by game, it's a lot of double digits. It's a lot of 20 and above. Um, even looking at his rushing yards, you want me to read off his rushing yards for you for the last? Um, yeah, I just don't want you to pass over one quick thing. Where did you say Eckler was though on that list? I believe Eckler is number one for P- for PPR. Oh, okay. I was going to say that goes back to an old bet from earlier yeah, this no, season no, no. about the redraft. I, right. I actually <laughs> was thinking about that because, you know, I was like, yeah, I wonder when uh, when Kyle's can deliver our beers that we got for a more recent bet. And I was like, oh, shit, I wonder if he's waiting to counteract the beers. I got to get him. <laughs> but I do remember, I believe it, if he was one, I owe you guys infinity beers. If it was two to five, it's a no, it's a deal breaker. Wash, yeah. It's a wash, yeah. there you go. And then anything below that, um, you guys owe me beer. Let's just say I'm not expecting any beer because he's he's not going <laughs> that far. Uh, but yeah, Austin Eckler, just a, a receptions king. But uh, for Josh Jacobs, last four games, and he, he's not not really a receiving back. He's actually done better than I expected in terms of receiving. Um, but this is just rushing totals. Last week, 99 yards. Week before, 144 yards. Week before that, 229 rushing yards, 109 against a good Denver defense. And during those games, he had four touchdowns, four rushing touchdowns. Like probably had to receive it. No, didn't receive it. But like he has become what Jonathan Taylor was last year. Like, not only is he your RB1, he's your RB1 who's guaranteed to get you 15 plus. Right now he's averaging 20. Like that's some serious stuff from a guy that uh, a lot of us wrote off because he had basically uh you know peaked and then just after that rookie year just like a, a little bit of a decline you're like all right maybe he's not the, as good as we thought he was coming out um contract year laying it all on the line man it's it's been uh very surprising to see he he fit perfectly for that Canada that people like to say is that that mid-round you know dead zone like you don't want these running backs you either get the top tier guys or just get the trash at the end he broke that stigma this year, and it was awesome to watch. Back to Jonathan Taylor, that comparison you had there of elite seasons back to back. The Taylor drafting spot in 2021 was at that tail end of the first round. So you could almost see somebody's roster. I know you and I could, and Ray Ray could do this too. You could look at a 2021 roster and be like, oh, you probably had like the 10th pick because you got Jonathan Taylor or the 12th pick. Right. You said the key word there about Josh Jacobs and why he is also my sleeper pick the dead zone. Now, zone. what's interesting about that dead zone in 2022 is we saw more and more people draft and how strategies have changed, numbers, analytics, whatever. You know it's person in your league who loves running backs. Like, they could have stacked Saquon and Henry or Z. You know, the two heavy running back person in your league, depending on how they laid out and everything else. And now you got the zero running back people. So you yep. know, post-draft, somebody's getting their phone out or they're looking at the draft board. They're like, man, I love my team. Look how good my wide receivers are. Yeah, my running backs stink. Or, wow, look how good my running backs are. If you had Josh Jacobs on your roster post-draft, you were not bragging about your team. You're just like, oh, I mean, I got it. Yeah. And you could look at it and be like, I said I wasn't going to do. I couldn't tell you what pick you had. I couldn't tell if you picked him in the seventh or the fourth or the ninth. Or, like, I had no idea where Josh Jacobs was going to go. And I wouldn't probably argue preseason if you told me 21st or 30th. I don't know. The season he had is remarkable to be the top running back in some of these stats we're looking at to be a consistent running back. As you just laid out the stats, that's all you want. Yep. And Jacobs was that player. So we both have Josh Jacobs 
a sleeper of 2022. Yeah. Can I give an honorable mention? Yes. Can we give some love to Geno Smith? Ooh, go on about Geno. So Geno Smith for me is when I when I laid out those two different categories of sleeper of the year. He's that first category, a guy that in most leagues probably wasn't even drafted, right? Like we didn't even know coming into the season if it was going to be Geno or Drew Locke. Like no one really knew, and you couldn't really make a case for either. It was like, oh man, like it's either way, you're screwed, right? Catch 22. Good luck with either one. Uh, according again to this ESPN draft kit, uh, Geno Smith was QB 32 <laughs> behind Kenny Pickett, Marcus Mariota, Davis Mills, Baker Mayfield, Zach Wilson, even Deshaun Watson suspended half of the year was ranked higher than Geno Smith. And he currently is QB six, six. QB I have, uh, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave with the two quarterback league. Oh. I had one of my buddies drafted Aaron Rodgers and Geno Smith thinking, oh, Rodgers will give me all the points. I think I'll be just good covered by – at the end of the year, he didn't make the playoffs. He said, my season was over when Geno Smith was outscoring Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. And, but, I mean, it was – Geno was good, though. It wasn't fluky. You know, like it wasn't like some ridiculous – like he found his running game and had 10 touch. No, like this guy has thrown two or more touchdowns in every game since week seven. I think that's the longest streak in the NFL, to be honest. Um, and so – not only with the quarterback position, it affects everything around the offense, right? So he improved the season for DK Metcalf. How great has Tyler Lockett been in the second half of this season? Uh, Kenneth Walker, the third. Like that whole offense, a lot of huge pieces in fantasy football relied on Geno Smith, and he somehow freaking delivered. Like he deserves something. If you want to make up an award, God's president of this, uh, of God's little media. <laughs> Make up an award for, for Gino because he deserves something. The comeback player of the year. Ooh, the, you know, I really just, I, you know, I don't mean to disrespect Gino Smith here, but the comeback would also assume there was a point where he was ever that good. He's never. What did he come back from? Come right, back of the year from college. Come back college right. player of the year. There you go. Uh, September of his senior year. That's right. Uh, let's also <laughs> add Jamal Williams too. Yeah. Because Jamal Whoa. Williams has got double digit Whoa. touchdowns this season. And Jamal Williams uh, back to a draft isn't he going to be kept by some people? Isn't he going to be a first round pick next year? I don't know. Jamal if Williams is. not going to be a first round pick. Are I you? don't know. DeAndre is, Swift, are they going to move him? Oh, is there going to be, I mean, what else would Jamal yeah, Williams have to do to be a starter? Like, so jokes aside, like I do not think Jamal Williams will be a, a first round pick next year, ADP. However, he's younger than people realize. Yeah. Like it feels like he's been around for a long time. I think it's because he has one of those names. You know, like there's probably been like five Jamal Williams in the NFL. And so like in your head, it was just like Mike Williams, right? We went from a Mike Williams wide receiver, Syracuse grad at, in Tampa Bay to Mike Williams. And there was a moment where I'm like, wait, is this the same guy? Like what happened? How many Mike Williams are out there right now? And there was the Roy Williams, you know, so yeah. Yeah, I think it's just what's happening with Jamal Williams. Where I'm like, wait a second. How long have you been here? Who are you? Where'd you come from? And you realize that, yeah, he's like only in like year five. You know, like he has some tread left. They obviously love him in Detroit. Um, the only reason that I think Jamal gets a little bit of a ding right now, he absolutely could have made somebody's season this year. As somebody who did draft him as a handcuff to DeAndre Swift, LOL. Hey. Um, you know, he did win me a lot of matchups because of, again, super low draft capital, um, end up becoming a touchdown machine. I don't even know if I can play him in the playoffs. Like that's dead ass. That's, I mean, like, if you watch what Detroit's doing right now, and it's one of those frustrating things where it angers you as a fantasy manager, but you respect it as a fan. Uh, like they have three fine running backs. They all do things a little bit different. Um, but can you rely on that with the season on the line? Like, can you rely that you don't even know if Jamal Williams is going to get 10 touches? He really, what somehow made his season so special is he just got super lucky with guys getting tackled inside the three yard line. You know, like Amon Ross St. Brown tripped up at the one or whatever, whoever got down there. And they're like, all right, let's give it to Jamal. You know, he's a bulldozer. Yeah. Uh, but like he has his floor is very low. And we've seen that in the last couple of weeks. Like if he doesn't find the end zone, you're looking at a four, four or five point performance. Is Jamal Williams James Conner from a more Ooh. recent season where he had a yeah. huge double digit like season that. and then went to a new team? We'll go even further back. Remember Michael Turner? 
for his oh, yeah. Charger franchise and then went to Atlanta and kind of timed it up yeah. perfectly. The issue with Williams is the free agency market for running backs too. You know, that oh, might be the reason gosh. he gets kicked or moved. Like if a lot of running backs move and we don't know what to expect, you might look at Williams and be like, well, he's in Detroit. Yeah, there's a lot that can be determined for Williams, but I wonder if he's somewhere I, in between Turner and I really, I really and do Connor. like that James Conner pick. Um, not only like in his style, you know, he's kind of a one-directional back. Um, he's a bruiser, but he's the team guy. You know, like when, when James Conner was in Pittsburgh, it was it was the guy that survived cancer. You know, went went to the University of Pittsburgh. You know, homegrown, like he immediately beloved by the fan base, right? And and it seemed like by the players. So I, I love that comparison on who they are as people and how they play the game. Uh, but but again, very touchdown dependent. Like I'm not I'm not counting on Jamal Williams to crack 100 yards. I don't know if he did that all season. Really, it's it's just the multiple touchdown games that were fantastic. And that's um, if you're relying on touchdowns in the playoffs. Uh, good luck because again, nothing touchdowns are never guaranteed. You know, that might make or break you, but you want the guy that has a better chance of of getting you the solid 80 yards just to make sure it's not a you know a, a goose egg out there. We will feel your misery if you have one of these players. You can blame them. You can call yourself a good fantasy football manager and blame all these guys, the busts of the 2022 season. I have a few. Oh, I wonder. Go oh, ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've got a bunch. All right, I've got, I've got three quarterbacks in one other position. Oh, so I can already Rick, name. I got. Yeah. I think I can name all three quick. Okay. Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady. Yes. Oh yeah, baby. Uh, the only the only one I actually when you said Wilson, I'm like, oh shoot, should I have led with him? Stafford is in that mix too because, yeah. but he got hurt, so I'm gonna yeah. kind of push oh, yeah. him so aside just, a little. Let's bit. just throw it out there right now for anybody who might be yelling Kyle Pitts or might be yelling what. If you're, if you're injured for most of the season, you're not going to be on this list. Hang on a right? second, though. P- P- Pitts should be criticized, though, because when he was healthy, he was as bad. But I, I get your point you're making. Right. But let, let, let's right. make sure we mention the word bust in Pitts because he's not getting out of this. Nice try, Kyle Pitts, because you stink. You stink <laughs> and you ruin people's Arthur seasons. Arthur Smith stinks. Arthur That's Smith right. stinks. Here's a great yeah, set about it. For, so for God, like Javante Williams maybe a better example. Yes. Javante Williams isn't a bust. He busted his knee week one or week two, whatever it was like those guys are not gonna be on the list. That might've been high draft picks that had unfortunate injuries. These are guys who just didn't figure it out all year and have been terrible to watch. So the floor is yours. one other, one other Kyle Pitts stat that I learned earlier this month since 1973, no tight end had finished top 10 in the Heisman, more offensive linemen, more defensive linemen, more defensive, no position, not counting kicker and punter had to have less. And Kyle Pitts was considered one of the greatest tight ends in the history of college football. But he's still that bad. So, yeah, the Ooh. quarterbacks are the answers. It's yeah. a combination of Wilson, Rodgers, and Brady because that was your franchise resting on those guys. Like, if you even waited, you thought, oh, my yep. God, I've got a fantasy football MVP, a league MVP, a Super Bowl champion. I've got Russell yep. Wilson with Rodgers. All of them. Uh, in, our, in the Dynasty League, I had Rodgers, and I just keep looking at some of these numbers. I'm like, oh, my God, how have you been so bad all year long? All three of those guys, terrible chop up the pizza triangle style there's your triangle of busty who's got the bigger piece because i i think it my my biggest piece is is russell Ooh, um, okay not only because of the contract i mean he's got the, the one of the craziest traits in the history of football um at least with rogers he's created some fantasy gold right like uh it's taken a while but christian watson right now is in that league winner category of a guy who's just having an unbelievable final month of, of the fantasy football regular season. Yes. Russell Wilson had a good game with Jerry Judy last week. It's the first one we've seen all year. Cortland Sutton has stunk with him. Jerry Judy has stunk. Uh, Dolchitz has been okay. Albert O is dead. Um, Melvin Gordon's jobless. Like it's, it's been that bad for Russell Wilson. I mean, we were even looking like, oh man, KJ Hamler, like is he, is Hamler going to be the next, you know, dude, nothing, nothing was produced by one of the worst offenses we've seen in the last two decades. Like that's how bad, like and with, in the Brady's case, Chris Godwin's been fine. Yeah. Mike, Edwin, and Mike Evans has taken a step back, but I think that's more Evans than Brady, to be honest. Something's wrong with Evans. I don't know if he's just getting old. He's losing a step. Some of the, some of the throws to Brady from Brady are fine. Evans just hasn't really been doing it, but, um, 
at least Chris Godwin's been productive. Like no one's productive in that Broncos offense. The only reason I started to lean towards Rodgers on that question you asked is because yeah. I had reasons to doubt the other two. Like you could have sold me on Brady's really old and he's past his prime. Sure. You could sell me on that, even though that hurts as a Bucks fan. You could sell me on Wilson just hasn't proven it yet in Denver. I, I know I said this word almost word for word on a podcast this year. I had said, why should I doubt Aaron Rodgers' Al Lazard connection? It worked for James Jones. It worked for everybody else in the past. Like there's no uh, Jordy Nelson, all these other guys. He's done this before. Why would I doubt he can't do it? Why is an Al Lazard going to have a huge season? Well, when he, he showed up, when he showed up as Con Air, that should have been your red flag. <laughs> that should have been like, uh oh, this guy smoked a little too much ganj in the offseason or whatever he was doing. And you know uh, what? Of those three, I don't know if it's going to get better next year for any of them. Like, no. What, what is it? Brady could be retired. Russell Wilson might have another head coach, and Aaron Rodgers is going to collect money, and they're still not probably going to draft skill guys. No, I mean like. The Brady one's interesting. Like he's so unpredictable right now of who he's even going to be playing for, if he's going to be playing. Um, but I, I think the game has changed so much. Like, yes, in the last few years, Aaron Rodgers' MVP has been fantasy, you know, very good. But I still am just going to keep eyeing the guys that can run the football. Like, who are the guys that are winning your leagues right now? It's Jalen Hurts. It's it's uh Josh Allen, like Lamar Jackson, if you use like I want the guys that can run the football. Um, they're going to get me the big points and come on, Brady can't run. Rogers doesn't run. Russell Wilson used to scramble, but he's calling Seattle plays while in Denver, like he's lost. So yeah, I'm with you I, I, next year. No way, Jose. I think it even puts more of a precedent. You know, we talk about how drafting styles might be switching, you know, like the zero running back strategy is Justin Jefferson going to be the top pick next year. Maybe Travis Kelsey. I think there's going to be an even more uh, emphasis on these quarterbacks because you want to make sure that you have a Josh Allen, a Hertz, a Burrow, a Herbert. Like you want the top five outside of the top five. It's crapshoot, man. It's an absolute crapshoot of who's going to um, who's going to deliver another running quarterback. How about Justin Fields? How good is yeah. he? Been? Barely can throw the football, but that guy can run for 100 yards and a couple touchdowns. That is another player talking about excitement for 2023. You get him on your roster and a little bit of few additions here and there, maybe the off season, maybe a wide receiver or running back looks at Chicago and says, I can do something with him. I can, we can make some wins happen in the future. A lot of cool stuff coming on the way for sure. Now, some people will look at this part of the podcast and say it's their favorite part. We're going to lead off with Godzilla media first, and then the dynasty league of the best playoff roster. We won't break down the matchups. We're just going to, maybe if you're listening and have similar players, we're going to have the same hope as some of these teams. But before we give you our picks for best roster, we're going to tell you about our friends over at Mohawk Honda. We've got our final show coming up for the Mohawk family this Saturday, 1130 to 1 o'clock. We're actually going to be at Mohawk Chevrolet at Half Moon. So stop in, say hello. LeVac and I will be there be doing our thing. Talking some bowl games. Talking some, don't forget, Saturday NFL action this week as well. Some Saturday action going on in the NFL this week. Set those fantasy football lineups. And if you've still been waiting this holiday season to get a perfect gift for her or for you or for someone in your family, how about a new ride in 2023 can be in your driveway, maybe even before Christmas? Talk to the staff either at Mohawk Honda or Mohawk Chevrolet. They will help you find exactly what you're looking for, your budget, your lifestyle, everything you want. Shout out to Scott Moynihan. Shout out to Andy Gelcher, all the great people we've got to work with over the years. Now you can do the same for yourself. Mohawk Honda, don't forget this Saturday, 1130 to 1, we'll be broadcasting live. Mohawk Chevrolet and Half Moon is where we're going to be. Mohawk, the whole family, they always go out of their way to please you. You said that very seductive. Yeah, you like that little holiday season? You're in the jammies all of a sudden? Gave me some goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you're looking at these rosters. Do you want me to go first, or would you like to go first? And who do you think has the best top-to-bottom roster in the Gonzalo League? You take it away. All right, not to sound like the narcissistic, conceited a-hole as he's doing a Godzilla Media podcast, blah, blah. I think it's my team. I know, I know I had the number one overall pick, but you look at the roster. Mahomes has Houston, even though that Houston defense actually showed up for those first three quarters against Dallas. Yeah. That's a good matchup. You get uh, wagering. If you're a fan of DraftKings, promo code 518. That's Seattle three and a half point dog at home on a short week. Divisional dog in front of the 12th man. That's a nice matchup for DK Metcalf. I got McCaffrey for Jonathan Taylor straight up. 
McCaffrey might catch some balls out of the backfield in the second half. That's all good. Uh, Justin Tucker, you know, I love some Justin Tucker when I can. Zeke scares me and Garrett Wilson scares me a little bit, but if the Jets are getting blown out by the Lions, which they could, that's a big game for both teams. Wilson can catch some balls in the second half as well. That's a really good roster. And I have TJ Hawkinson on there as well. J.O. as well. Uh, Commanders against the Giants. That's the top to bottom right there. I think my team is the best roster for the playoff push. Man, and you have a solid lineup even while losing Debo Samuel. Like that's impressive. And, and we're, you know, for people that maybe are just tuning in or not really sure what the Godzilla League's about, it's 14 team league. It's one of those leagues where one of your one of your top guys goes down. Usually it's a it's a large gap on your bench. But for you to have, you know, DK Garrett Wilson and then Isaiah Pacheco in the flex, like, yeah, you you would obviously be starting Debo if he's healthy, but I don't think you're panicking, you know, like you're looking at that and still feeling pretty confident. Now, one more inter- you know, injury and you're done. But again, it's 14 teams. If this is wild, because I think all year, uh, you know, field of dreams, who's who's field of dreams? Uh, that is Trav from the Trav and Rigney show. There you go. So Trav, I think <laughs> if this is Madden and you turn off injuries, Trav's Trav's running running this thing, right? Yes, and he might have had the best team preseason. I think after the draft, he had the best team, yep. But now we're looking at, um, you know, in his lineup right now, and I think he's going to have to do some tinkering. Um, you know, T. Higgins, who left, like, after the first series last week. Ramondre Stevenson left in the first half in his game. Justin Fields is now sick and not practicing for a team that has really nothing to play for. Um, so those are three huge guys in his team, which – also includes Devonte Adams, Tony Pollard, who could be in that um, sleeper of the year conversation. Uh, Travis Kelsey, your boy, out there at yeah. tight end. Uh, Jarek McKinnon, who's who's uh, rediscovered himself in Kansas City, especially in that passing game. So that's a scary team, and he lost Damian Pierce, who's now injured and doubtful to play this week. So again, if you turn off injuries, I think this team is legit. I think he's actually going to have uh, you know a tough time getting out of the first round because he's going to have to scramble if those guys are unable to go. I do like Kyle's team. Uh, Kyle Wright, give him a shout out for even though he's not here. Um, I want to bring this up because I, I I think one of the toughest de- decisions in this first round of the fantasy playoffs is what you do with Kenneth Walker. Yes, Kenneth Walker coming off of injury. Uh, short week. I mean, I wish you wish it was a Saturday or a Sunday game, but you know, to rest up, he's practicing in full. Sounds like he might play on Thursday. The bad part, he's playing against the number one rush defense in the NFL in a scary Niners defense. Like, I don't, I can't think of a worse scenario. Like, sure, if 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 Kenneth Walker hadn't been hurt, he's staying in your lineup. He got you there. He is one of those guys who, in one play, can take it eighty yards to the house. Against that defense, coming off an injury, what do you do? It's what do tough. you do? I, I don't know. I, I do not know the answer. Like it, it, Obviously, it's going to be based on what are your other options. So looking at Kyle, Miles Sanders, great option. DeAndre Swift against the Jets? Ugh, that gives me no confidence. Uh, Devin Singletary against Miami? Yeah, yeah. Kyle has one of the tougher decisions to make, and he might that might be the difference between him going in. But I will agree, guys. I think your team is scary. I would not want to be playing your team. Um, why is McCaffrey questionable? Yeah, I also injury? saw that too. And I, and I know just because Monday. we were talking about that Seahawks Niner matchup. Remember, the Seahawks got beat last week, and the leading receiver for the Panthers had less than 40 yards. So over 30 plus carries with two running backs, over 150 yards. Don't be shocked if maybe San Francisco, and we mentioned Debo as well about his curiosity. And so I say his listings. I'm curious what Debo is going to do. That's how I discuss him now. Uh, let's flip it to the Dynasty League. Now, this is a long keeper league. There's multiple keepers in this. Looking oh, at Ross. Ross we'll, yeah, we'll, go we'll ahead. Breaking go. news at uh, 430 on a Wednesday. Kenneth okay. Walker. No designation. He will be playing tomorrow. Ooh, well, that makes my pick here for the Dynasty League a little bit easier now. It makes our discussion uh, a little easier for what they're going to do because for the second time in a row, Ray Ray's getting love here. Now, his oh. team, he made a big trade late. If you're wondering why Devontae Adams is on this roster, uh, he made a trade for him. He did start off his season 
12 and 0. I don't care if you're in dynasty keepers, what 12 and 0 is 12 and 0. That that's remarkable to have a season like that. Burrow, Cook, Eckler, Ayuk, Hopkins sat on his bench, played out the suspension. Adams, Knox, Kenneth Walker. Yeah, Stacked. That is a scary team. Yeah. Um, you know, Kyle, with you, first round pick uh, to pick up Devontae Adams with uh, picks being, or, you know, tri- draft picks for the future being allowed. He's obviously all in. He, that was his only, um, the only hole in this team was it's a, a three wide receiver league. Um, he had some good receivers. Like Hopkins has been, has been good since coming back. Ayuk has been um, much better in year three, but obviously getting the number one, number one wide receiver in Devonte Adams is just absolutely massive. Actually he's down to number three. Cause I think he had, he did have a bad week, but um, he gets to play Pittsburgh in uh, Kyle's a buy. So semifinals, he gets Pittsburgh. One of the worst secondaries in the NFL right now. Uh, does have a tough matchup against San Francisco, so we'll see if that hurts him in the, if he gets to the championship. But, yeah, no, it's a scary team. The only thing with Kyle's team is um, he doesn't have anything to play for this week. He does have that buy. There's no depth on Kyle's team. And him and I have argued over that for years, whether it's important or not. And he just hates having to make tough decisions. He's an injury away. If he loses a guy, he doesn't have his handcuff for, for Cook. Um, yeah, he does have Spiller, but I don't even know if Spiller is the real handcuff for Eckler. It's got Gabe Davis on his bench, you know, like that's all he really has. Cause yeah, he did lose some guys to injury this year and he's holding some other players for fan for, uh, keeper strategy, but, uh, no, it's a tough team. It's a tough team to beat. I think he's going to be in the championship and, uh, I wouldn't want to play him in the championship. I'll just put it at that. I had one other team here, and it might sound like we're being nice to each other on this edition, but I can't say I like Garrett Wilson, TJ Hawkinson, a top (laughs) one or two scoring quarterback, and then not do the same thing for another league, which is your team. You have Hawkinson, you have Wilson, you've got Stephon Diggs, Josh Allen. Uh, We mentioned one of the sleepers of the year, Jamal Williams. The t- AJ Brown, you know, the tough part for you is you've got to do some dancing here with the Bengals. Is it Samaj P. Ryan? Right. Is it Joe Mixon? Is and they it, have, and they is have it Dylan? Co- you know, you've got some waddles on that roster too. You've got some flex. And those last few spots is going to drive. I see you've done shadow style here, by the way, too, not revealing your pick. I stole that from you guys. <laughs> oh, empty, good. Empty out that lineup. <laughs> Keep your opponent guessing of what Ugh. you're going to do. Um, I'm in a similar position as Kyle in that other league with, you know, DeAndre Swift. I have the DeAndre Swift, Jamal Williams stack going on. Um, neither have a great matchup this week. But, yeah, trying to figure out that last flex spot is going to be tough. But um, it's tough, man. This is, this is a, pr- a pretty competitive league. I think all uh, six teams have a legitimate chance. You know, I, I think there's some, there's some serious uh, – Serious contenders. So it's going to be interesting to see who makes it out of this first round and then the semifinals. I think it's going to be a lot of coin flips, to be honest. It's going to be pretty tough because Gardner Royce, defending champion in this league, um, somehow pulled up a miraculous win last year in the championship. This year, he gets Josh Jacobs, the MVP, gets Tony Pollard, an MVP candidate guy uh, for fantasy. And so he's been riding those two guys into this into this uh, first round buy. So we'll see if he can keep that magic going. We could have another Guardy party could potentially Woo! get set off here. Uh, interesting schedule for We Talk Fantasy. The holidays are on the way. Yep. And as you can tell, like the championships are going to be right around Christmas this year. So we will keep you informed of how this is all going to come together. This is a weird setup. So just keep your eyes peeled. Download, subscribe, rate, and review. It'll pop up on your phone if you're traveling this holiday season. Hopefully, we'll continue to have some more coverage throughout the playoffs. Talk and more. Uh, Chet Davis. Good luck in the playoffs. Hopefully we'll face off at some point again in the near future. I don't think the brackets have set us up to face each other at any point here in either league. So, cause I'm in the loser bracket in the dynasty. I'm still league. mad. You gave Kyle Devonte Adams. <laughs> but I know you to had you. to do it. I know you had to do it. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Kyle. <laughs>